Hey, welcome everyone to another video as part of my TV Explained playlist series. If you want to find a link to the series of my channel, you can find a link to that in the video description. And what we're going to do this video is discuss why plasma TVs are dead. This is going to be similar to what I did in a previous video, in which I explained why 3D TVs are dead. Now I'm covering why plasma TVs are dead. Now, if you want to see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website also in the video description. So this kind of irks a lot of people, especially those who are plasma TV enthusiasts, which are still plenty of, even though the technology is kind of dead for several years. But before we discuss why plasma TVs are dead, let's discuss why they were good. Because again, there's still a huge fan base for plasma TVs. Now, one of the top reasons is refresh rate. And this is actually my personal favorite. Uh, it's what I consider as number one is that usually with LCD and LED TVs, they tend to average between 60 hertz to 120 hertz, sometimes 240 hertz refresh rate. Now, there's some gimmicky things about that that you should note is that sometimes when you see 120 hertz refresh rate, especially from Samsung TVs, it's not actually always true. It's kind of a marketing gimmick. Um, I could explain more information in another video in that TV series I was explaining about, in which I explain refresh rate and interpolation. A link to that video will be in the video description as well. But when it comes to plasma TVs, you truly do get a high refresh rate. They would average between 400 to 600 hertz compared to LCD and LED, but there's still a caveat to that high refresh rate with plasma TVs. Just because you have a high refresh rate doesn't mean the picture is actually playing back in that much smooth picture because a lot of TV shows and movies are recorded and played back at 24 to 30 frames per second. So if the video playing back has a low frames per second, high having a high refresh rate doesn't actually mean it's going to be a smoother picture. That still depends on the TV technology itself, not just the refresh rate. If anyone's more interested in the difference between frames per second and refresh rate and how they kind of overlap, but they're not the same thing, let me know in the comment section and I'll make another video about that. But generally speaking, if the technology was designed well enough from the manufacturer in that plasma TV, the refresh rate would generally look better. Now, another advantage plasma TVs had over LCD and LED for the longest time were dark, deep blacks. Now, some of you might be thinking, why does that really matter? You know, who cares about dark black? images. Well, you should care because anything with dark imagery, usually in a black scene, so let's say you're watching Star Wars, for example, and they kind of show a lot of space battles. Well, there's usually black scenery in the background and outer space, but the spaceships have light around them. The spaceship will look better on a plasma TV than it would on an LCD and LED TV. That's why having darker blacks really matters. Now, I might be thinking, why does this really matter? I don't really watch a lot of stuff with dark scenery and black images. You have to reconsider that statement if that's what you're thinking, because think about movies, especially the Star Wars series, Star Trek series from the past and even the revised rebooted version. Anything with space battles. It's always in outer space with deep, dark blacks that makes the picture better. The DC movie series, um, a lot of the fight sequences are in dark scenes. The Dark Knight trilogy, because it's Batman, the Dark Knight, who's usually fighting in the dark, which makes sense. Except for the last movie. No spoilers, but... You kind of think about it, Batman was majority during the day, not at nighttime. Kind of weird, right? The dark night at, at daytime? I don't know. The, the day night? I don't know. Anyway, a lot of Marvel movies, a lot of the action sequences would be in dark scenery. And of course, one more strong advantage Plasma had over competing technologies was viewing angles. This is one of the most important for a lot of people. So what this basically means is that it doesn't really matter which angle you're sitting at from the TV, right? If I'm sitting at this sharp angle, I'm not dead center but the picture would look very clear for me. The problem with LCD and LEDs back then is that to get a very good picture of clarity, to see things clearer with nice picture and, and color and contrast and all that good stuff, you usually have to sit center to the picture. The more centered you are, the better it would look. The more at an angle you are, the worse it would look. Now, Plasma had a huge strong advantage to this. And you have to imagine if you're in a tight space or if you have a whole family sitting around a TV like an L-shaped couch or whatever you might have, Having a plasma TV was a strong advantage there. Now, those are the main reasons plasma TVs were better. And there are some other smaller reasons, like for example, for the longest time, plasma TV had better picture quality than LCD and LED. But now let's shift gears into why plasma TVs are no longer being manufactured and, well, kind of dead, I guess, as a produced technology, if you will. And one of the main reasons was marketing. Powerhouse companies like Samsung and LG had tremendous amount of money budgeted into marketing LCD and LED TVs. Competing manufacturers were still really focused on plasma, couldn't compete with their marketing power. Now, another marketing point, which is not intentional and it has nothing to do with Samsung and LG or any company for that matter, was TVs displayed in stores and how they're marketed. You see, when you go to a store, stores are usually brightly lit. They want to show off products, whether it's a TV or a stereo system, whatever. Stores usually have bright lighting. 
Now this is the problem. Plasma TVs do not do well in brightly lit areas. They show a lot of reflection of what's you know, in the area around you. Because it's too brightly lit, they'll show a lot of reflection of things around the TV. But LCD and LED don't have that problem. Well, not as bad actually. They'll still show reflection if it's too bright, but it won't be as bad as plasma. So when people go to the store and they see there's too much reflection on the plasma TV, they'll be like, yeah, the LCD and LED looks better. But again, it's because stores are brightly lit. But if you're going to watch a TV in the dark, plasma's turned out better. But when you see it in the store, it just puts you off naturally from plasma. LED TVs are also cheaper to manufacture. So of course, when this happens, you know, that means that it's cost saving to manufacture these LED technology TVs. Producing plasma was much more expensive. Of course, if LED TVs are cheaper to manufacture, that cost saving goes to the store. The store is able to sell it slightly cheaper to the customer. The customer saves more money compared to plasma. So it's a cycle. Now keep in mind there's LCD, but when LEDs were starting to be introduced is around the same time a lot of countries on the western side of the globe, North America and Europe especially, we're starting to encourage cost-saving technology, technology that uses less electricity. Well, LCD and especially LED were much more power efficient than plasma. In fact, LED TVs compared to plasma of the exact same size TV would tend to use about 25% of the electricity compared to plasma. Plasma may use almost four to five times more electricity than an LED TV would. And in countries like here in Canada, a lot of technology, when you look up the tag in a store, would have some sort of tag where it shows you the estimated electricity cost of the usage per year. So when you look at the plasma one versus the LED one, people are like, whoa, the LED one's gonna save you money over the long run in electricity usage. Of course, I'm more inclined to buy that as well. Another item is burn-in image. Now this is being heavily debated for many, many years from plasma enthusiasts and people that would just knock plasma. So see, there's two sides of this argument. Some people would say, well, burn-in image happens very frequently with plasma. And plasma enthusiasts will say, no, it's not the case. It's a bit of truth to both sides, actually. You see, LED, LCD, and plasma are very rare to get burn-in image with daily use at your home. It's, it's very, very rare to just happen out of nowhere within the first several years of using the TV. However, plasma TVs are slightly more susceptible to getting burn-in. Again, it doesn't mean it's going to happen that easily. It's just slightly more susceptible compared to LCD and LED. But plasma is weak in one regard. If you ever go to a doctor's office or if you go to a bar with huge large screen TVs, there's like six or seven of them across the bar in the restaurant area. And if they're playing news or sports news across these TVs, they tend to have the same static image playing. You know, throughout the 12, 14 hours the restaurant's open or whatever. Those static images that are always showing up on news channels or sports news channels that broadcast the same thing 24 seven, they're gonna get those logos and stuff burnt into the image. This is where plasma was weak in terms of burn in image after several hours nonstop every day the same thing playing, something that you wouldn't do at home. And of course, when people see that, they might be inclined to ask the employee, hey, what kind of TV technology is that? You find out it's plasma and naturally it puts you off. To be honest, I've done that myself. Sometimes I've seen a lot of burn in image at a restaurant bar and I'm kind of like, when the waitress or waiter comes up, we're like, hey, just curious, what kind of TV is that? They'll be like, oh, it's plasma. I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of burn in image. It happens all the time with plasma. But again, it wouldn't happen that much at home, but because you see it in public, you might be inclined to avoid plasma. There also became a sudden surge of massive TV sizes. You're talking about 65 inches and up, 65, 70, 75, 80, 90 even inches of screens, and LEDs were being produced in those TV sizes. Not so much plasma. So TVs, of course, in that huge size, LED had that advantage. There's also the opposite side of the size spectrum. You see, when it comes to small screens, like 19 inches even for like say a computer monitor or even a laptop monitor, think about it. Those are like 13, 14, 15 inches, give or take. They're usually LCD LED technology. Plasma is not being designed in such a small screen size. So because companies like Samsung and LG were mass producing super large screens, but also really small screens for computer monitors and laptop screens, that went to mass production. This goes back to my earlier point about mass production. The more mass production there is, the cheaper it is to create the technology and roll it out to stores. The cheaper it is to sell to customers, which means more cost saving. The next item is weight. Now this sounds kind of weird, but just hear me out. As the years progress, online shopping is more and more popular, but you have to remember that when LED technology was coming out, it was getting even more popular to shop online and LED TVs are rather light compared to plasma. Plasma's TVs are heavy. The heavier an object is, the more expensive it is in shipping costs. 
There's another advantage to LED TVs and why people are more inclined to buy an LED TV over plasma because it's cheaper to ship to them. And lastly is heat. Now this one again might sound like a not a big deal, but just hear me out. Plasma TVs tend to get warm. In some cases they get really hot depending on where you have it placed. For example, if it's in your bedroom, if you have a huge bedroom, of course, or if it's in your family room and your TV setup just has to be next to a window. Sometimes you just can't help it. And the sun is really close to it, you know, glaring down close to the plasma TV in the summer. It's going to generate even more heat. And a lot of countries don't have air conditioning, right, in the summer. A lot of countries are also hot all year round. That means your plasma TV is getting super hot all year round. And I say this with confidence because I've seen this and felt it firsthand. I went to a friend's house who had a plasma TV in a family room physically next to a window because they don't have a choice. That's physically how their house is designed and their couches would fit perfectly. It was a summer, a lot of sunlight was coming through the window right next to the TV. The TV's generating heat. It was a bad combination. It was super hot. Him and I were chatting. I was about two or three feet away from the TV like I am today and I could feel the heat from the TV being emitted. In fact, when I touched it, it was roasting hot. Like I had to let go immediately. And I told my friend, I was like, yo, any home theater wires you have on this TV, make sure it never touches it. That is a super dangerous hazard right there. I'm not exaggerating. This has really happened. And there you have it. Those are some of the top reasons why plasma TVs were strong. They, they were a great technology and given in their field of area. But also those are the reasons why plasma TVs are dead. And of course, as strong as plasma TVs were, well, the fact is LED technology has taken over and adopted in many different ways. OLED, micro LED, QLED, and who else knows what's going to be next. And of course, those new technologies take the strengths of plasma and LCD LED, combines them into single technology, which is micro LED, OLED, and blah, 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 like I mentioned earlier. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links in the video description, as well as my website link. Hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe. And thanks for watching.